So I was able to charge uh, 10,000 uh, euros for that project. Because th that 10,000 euros project turned into a one monthly contract. And I remember you hired someone else from the accelerator exactly. to work on it, right? It was absolutely, it was absolutely a, a, cr a crazy experience, you know, for me. Hey Ziad, it's been great to see your growth in over just the past few months. Can you tell me where were you in your business and just your life situation when you first met me and where are you right now? Yeah, so thanks for having me here. So when I first met you, I was essentially all about the micro SaaS and, uh, you know, building so uh, like software as a service, um, you know, products that can give me passive income. And I was just really trying to create all these different ideas. And I joined your Discord server after uh, seeing that you are doing this challenge where um, you as a senior engineer are reviewing other projects. So I was working on something called Huddle Hire. It was a software for um, people to scan, uh, for HR managers to scan mm. the resumes of people and to score them. And I, I made a submission. And then from them, I just got exposed to this huge community and went to this huge rabbit hole and built a lot of relationships with people. But essentially, this was my main focus, just building software as a service product. Nice. And you were, you had a job as well, right? I think you're a student and you had a job and you were trying to build like some side incomes. Exactly. Right? So I, I was working full time at a startup, I think it was at the time, right? Um, I wanted to obviously like improve a little bit my income. It wasn't great because I, you know, junior engineer plus startup that that's always in Europe, especially that's always a recipe for, uh, you know, low pay. So yeah, that was how it. Uh, and then now, since then you started uh, offering your services like AI development services. Can you walk me through like some of the projects that you worked on? Um, some of the like deals that you got? Yeah. So prior to actually like me meeting you and like, joining the whole community i was uh, essentially only involved in one small uh, free, freelance project I, I was having a hard time marketing myself i was ha having a hard time doing proposals it was just really kind of shot in the blue and i kind of got it um i was working for uh, over the summer um before i joined actually uh, it was yeah just on a small logistics software i helped along and it was it felt really like an actual job it wasn't really independent right and i i don't think i would would have been capable of, of like leading independently a project and like delivering it at the end. So, yeah. So you had one project before, like one freelance project before, right? That was the only experience you had really like making money that online. Essentially work like I, I shouldn't even be mentioning it because technically it was like a job. It really, I was working along as, uh, aside the senior. It was just, mm -hmm. hey, there's these issues, there's two these issues, but um, I'm mentioning it because it just shows how, how absolutely dependent I am on on like other people and like mm. for them to just really manage the work, but like freelance experience, like marketing yeah. myself and making a business, that was that was a whole different story. Mm. And can you tell me more about like through the community, through the accelerator, what are some of the projects and some of the deals that you got? So yeah, um, so I uh, so initially I was um, building a you know, the, that's SaaS um, stuff and it didn't end up working out, uh, but I still kept close contact with the community. I met a lot of great people. And then one day I got an email because I was also subscribed to your uh, newsletter as everybody else should. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I got uh, an advertisement for a project, you know, that uh, is education tech, uh, you know, try um, in the AI space. And I thought, okay, well, I have decent experience with open AI and all that stuff. Why just not apply? And I sent over a loom video of a huddle hire and I was walking them through it and other little SAS I've been creating over the time and also my CV. Um, and then, yeah, surprisingly, I just got an email back and this is how I got um, closer contact with user back. And um, yeah, the rest is history. Then I got introduced to the client. That's the first thing. Yeah, this was, uh, basically for context where everyone is a friend of mine who was looking to hire a developer to build an MVP for his startup idea. And he asked me like, do I know some good developers? And I have like, yeah, I have some good developers in the program. So I made an announcement. I said, this is the project. This is like roughly the potential revenue, et cetera, that you can get. And then who is, uh, who is interested, just apply, send me your best project and I'll select the best developer. And you were one of the few who applied. There was like a short list of three candidates who were selected. I send them to the client and he selected you essentially for it. And then you were able to land the deal. Uh, can you remind me what was the amount of that deal again? Yes. Yeah, so I was able to charge uh, 10,000 uh, euros for that project. Hmm. Um, it, um, I reserved over a span of two months. Um, and you know, I kind of, 
uh, it was essentially just creating an MVP from scratch um, mm -hmm. that you know manifested an idea and, in, and integrated AI into it. So yeah, it was a very nice. straightforward. Yeah. And then you ended up because th that ten thousand or ten thousand euros project turned into a monthly contract, like a monthly deal. And I remember you hired someone else from the accelerator exactly. to work on it, it right? Absolutely, it was absolutely a, an, a, cr a crazy experience, you know, for me because um, I found okay, I had some budget left, and the scope of the project was growing, and the um, client felt like he would like to pursue a working relationship with me. So um, yeah, I, I worked something out with them and I was able to hire somebody and then doing that. Uh, and yeah, uh, coincidentally, that person was from the accelerator, you know, um, and a uh, super cool guy. And he, until today, he's doing great work on the, on that very specific project. Mm, awesome. Awesome. And the, the funny thing is also, I ended up hiring you again for another project this time for my agency, because for context, everyone watching, maybe not everyone has context is I have my own AI development company where we build like AI solutions for businesses as well. So sometimes for some projects that I'm not taking myself, I, I just distribute it to members of the accelerator. And sometimes I would just take this project. It kind of depends on my availability, like what I'm doing at the time. And I landed this specific project and I was like, actually, I remember <laughs> Ziad in the community is very active. He's like uh, building good stuff and I have trust that in your skills, if I give you something, you're going to deliver and you can do it professionally. And so I ended up hiring you for this uh, other project, which was maybe actually you can describe the project, that law firm uh, automation project. Exactly. So um, the, um, I, I got hired uh, for your business to build for a law firm, a Chrome extension that can handle, um, you know, the automatic filling out of documents. So obviously, as you guys know, uh, law firms, they deal with a lot of bureaucracy. There have to be like dozens of forms that have to be filled out and sent to the court. And if there's one mistake, it has to be sent back. Mm -hmm. And they've been already using a software, you know, a very established enterprise thing, but it is not very good at uh, consistently filling out everything. And then, yeah, uh, they wanted um, a Chrome extension that with AI automatically can just detect that, hey, I'm on this uh, form and I'm trying to fill something out. Um, please you know, deal with the filling out automatically. And um, this was a very straightforward. Thing. Um, yeah, and hopefully this project will turn into a long-term deal because we already have like potential of extra features we can add. Th that's like one of my goals as well is I want to take this client and try to see if we can have like a long-term relationship where we have like a monthly um, monthly scope of work that we can do for them. That would be pretty cool. Sure. Also, something I'm curious is you, you mentioned like joining the community and, and everything. Were there other communities that you joined or other programs you joined before joining the Codebender community, Codebender Accelerator? I'm just curious. And if you did, like, how is it different from what you saw? So I must admit that yes. I was absolutely, yeah. So I was absolutely super strictly against joining communities like this. I was kind of, um, obviously, the environment that we kind of came up with now is, is not very friendly towards accelerators and like programs that help you advance business or career, right? Like obviously the, the Andrew Tate Hustlers University, mm -hmm. and then a lot of people made videos exposing it, you know, that it's really just recycled, uh, washed up information and, oh, you have to have the great mindset and, uh, oh, you have to, you just have to, to read. Yeah. They have like a 10, the first 10 modules is just about the mindset. <laughs> exactly. The 10 first 10 modules are about the mindset and then, oh yeah. Um, have you thought about social media marketing, you know, which is like, or drop shipping. So I, I was really kind of, um, against an, any of that. I was just like, okay, um, I'm gonna, you know, try to go at it myself. You can't really trust the people, but since I organically joined the Codebender community, right, I wasn't really, um, you know, coming from it from a perspective, oh, I, I'm going to join this program right now. But then after seeing kind of how this community works from the inside, I kind of like uh, went like, okay, I think this is uh, worth investing in and uh, investing mm -hmm. time and effort in. So, yeah, um, I joined. Awesome. How would you say actually your mindset changes around business and around what you can do like as a developer like someone who has a job and is trying to grow and make money through like other means how would you say your mindset has changed like those past couple of months yeah i think um if you focus too much on the technical part you probably are going to get left behind right i i always came from this this perspective that okay my technical skills are the one that uh, the, the ones that are going to matter the most right and 
I felt it was impressive that I can now implement my own authentication system and like whatever. Oh yeah, I can roll my own auth and and you know I know how all that works and whatever. But it 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 two things changed essentially. First of all, my um, my resourcefulness as a developer, right? Mm-hmm. Prioritize getting things done and making them work reliably, you know, as opposed to just dragging things along and like trying to over-engineer in the beginning, right? That's what Agile is all, all about, but I still really didn't understand it at the end of the day, But right? Like if you asked me two years ago, or for example, maybe before joining the Accelerator, I would probably have, you know, over-engineered a lot of solutions. But mm-hmm. now I realize, okay, people don't care about whether you're using this or this framework. People are using, uh, are caring about how it performs, how it works, is it user-friendly, and stuff like that. So you just really change the way you think about building software. That's mm-hmm. the first thing. The other thing yeah, is... Clients, they only care, you know, like fundamentally what clients care about is that your solution works well, that it's delivered quickly and at a reasonable price, right? So that they have good return investment. That's all they care about. They don't care if you use Next.js or Angular or something like that, like which fancy tools used, because they don't even understand what it is. Like they're not engineers themselves. Like most of those clients that we work with, uh, like now those like business owners that need AI solutions, they just want it to work well, like be reliable, that you implement it fast and at a good price. That's all. That's like the three variables. Exactly. Mm. And um, yeah. And the other aspect was essentially just making sure that I communicate well and that I market myself, right? If I close mm-hmm. uh, the room into myself and just live a life of inaction and just apply to random jobs and message people, that's just not going to work. You have to build an image. You have to connect with people. You have to, um, you know, even if those connections, you feel like they don't have high ROI, like return on investment, Mm. you still are supposed to put yourself out there because I would have never kind of gotten hired for this other project if I wasn't just a consistent and like, you know, active part of the community. So yeah, really showcasing your skills because there's a lot of developers. They have the skills. They don't even realize that they're sitting on on like a gold mine of of skills that they have that they could use to make a lot of money to profit. But because they they just keep it hidden on GitHub or something like that, like no one will see it. If for example, you the projects that you built, the ones that I noticed, and the reason why I gave you that first project, and then I hired you again, and inshallah we'll have like more deals too. Is, is because I saw that you have those skills. I, I'm not some kind of mind reader where I can just see a person and can detect like everything about them and just and, and hire them. It's uh, like I need to see if I don't see it, I'm, I'll simply not not do like not give any opportunities. Right. And same goes for a lot of different opportunities that exist in the market is only when people see that you have a skill set that you can bring some value. That's when it can unlock like, a range of opportunities. For you. So, yeah, being visible is, is big. That's huge. Something I'm curious about is what are your goals for like your business goals for the next six to 12 months? Do you have a plan? Like how do you want to scale your business and, and, and grow more? Yeah. So right now I'm going to build myself a team. I'm going to make sure that, you know, I, I build a community, like I build a community. I kind of put myself also like, I'm going to emphasize both of these points, you know, optimize the way I'm delivering products and, uh, you know, have a, very streamlined way of doing it. And then building a good team is part of that, obviously, right? As you grow your business, you're not going to be able to do a lot of development by yourself, but rather Mm. you're going to be doing a lot of management, right? And now um, also I need to put myself out more aggressively, right? I'm going to maybe start creating content. I'm going to start, um, you know, speaking to more people, going to conferences, whatever. If, you know, there is like get togethers for companies or developers, just go there, chat and meet new people. And I feel like this is just a, a setup for mm. a more healthy business down the road. Inshallah. Awesome. Who would you recommend the Codebender Accelerator to? Who do you think would be, would get value from it? Have a job who have some marketable skills, right? That gold mine that you talked about. Um, and at the same time, they just want to be a little bit more independent. They want to start making, you know, they want to build themselves a halal business, you know, that doesn't really, um, that gives them the freedom to choose what to work on and avoid any, um, you know, haram stuff that might be out there. Um, all of these things, like if you're a person like that, then you probably would like to join. Yeah, exactly. This is for... So we look to work for with serious developers, like people who they have like a base skill set, but they're thinking like, how can they make money online 
like outside of their work in in halal way, completely remote, flexible, and something that can like ultimately grow to replace their main like nine to five, like their main income essentially. That this business could become their main income and they can like way surpass it. That's our our goal. Um, so if you're watching this, if you're a developer like this, that's the exact type of people we're interested to work with. And final question, I just curious to know, and I think a lot of people watching this will be very interested. Do you have an advice for someone who is looking to get started? Imagine like you a few months ago, you're just a developer, you have some few skills, maybe you're not that versed into AI, but you want to get started. You realize that right now, this is the golden age. You can make a lot of money doing this, and but you don't you just don't know where to get started. What would you recommend? Like one action that they could take? Yeah, the action that they could take is that they should take action, right? Because it's really... Even if you don't know everything, and you're never going to know everything, right? You The w true wisdom is realizing that uh, you know what you don't know. Like, wait, hold on. True wisdom is kind of realizing that you can't know everything, but your environment is going to teach you, you know? If you're going to be, th like, thrown in the water, then you're going to learn how to swim, right? But all mm. you need is to take action. Don't keep building these uh, roadmaps that you created with ChatGPT and, okay, I'm going to spend one year still learning about the specific technology and only if I yeah, one year everything can change exactly yeah. like we, like look at how ChatGPT was in 2023 yeah. and now how it is today right so it's really the industry is changing just take action just even if you don't feel like you have all mm. of it figured out because you will never have it all figured out mm. but just this accelerator is about taking action and this is pretty much the big piece of advice that you took. If I haven't sent my portfolio to Zarbeck, I'll pro I wouldn't have ever been hired by him, you know, for that one project and then at the same time for this new project, right? Mm -hmm. And Exactly. exactly. Yeah. And a lot of those projects also what people don't realize is that they're a lot simpler than what people think in general. As they imagine these things like, oh, this is an insane AI project, I'm not qualified, like I need to be an expert. The reality is that a lot of those business owners that pay like five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 more they don't need things that are very complex. It's things that a lot of developers can build, but it's just that the market is evolving in a direction where now AI is spreading everywhere. And a lot of those small businesses, law firms, like home service businesses, real estate firms, et cetera, like recruitment services, like uh, companies, they all need AI now. And they all need things that are not super complicated. And that's where the opportunity is for people like you, me, the people watching this, those who will act fast, they are going to reap all the rewards. The people who are a little bit skeptic, who are like a super senior, like uh, tech leads, uh, staff level engineers who are super experienced, they're going to be like, oh, no, like AI is just like this thing. Like, this is stupid. Like, don't believe in it. You have like this camp. Then you have the camp of, of people who are, they already, they gave up already. <laughs> they like, this is the apocalypse. Or, like, we're done. We just, yeah. everything is pointless. So you, so you have those two camps. And those guys, unfortunately, they're not going to profit at all from this revolution because they just don't take it strategically like in a smart way. And the people who take action, like you said, maybe they're not the best developers, but the market rewards the speed of action and, and, and people who are opportunistic and they jump on opportunities. Yeah. So it's a good way to close it. Sure. Um, Ziad, just wanted to say thank you for your time. Really appreciate you coming. Uh, congratulations again on the projects you got. Inshallah, this is just the beginning for many more success to come. And wish you all the best. Assalamu alaikum.